Bang! Jerkoffs, we're back in with a brand new episode. I'm sorry it's not on Monday or Tuesday. I think this thing was scheduled to be a Monday podcast, but guess what? I'm keeping it loose. I don't want you relying on me to get through your week. I want you to be excited when I turn up. That's what I want for the Union Jack Off for you. But Jerk Offs, I love you. Thank you for listening in. Uh, it's going to start a little... This this episode, this week is the start of a little, little season. Let's call it a little season of episodes about Brexit, where I talk to different comedians who live in the UK who are from different parts of Europe, different parts of the EU, and I have a quick chat to them about how... Brexit is kind of impacting them, like whether they get to stay here and work just because unlike a lot of other jobs where they could probably get sponsored by their work, comedy, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, as, a, as a person from Australia and from the Commonwealth, uh, I don't know anything about it. So I want to listen to what they have to say, their perceptions of it, how long they've been here, all that kind of stuff. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to let you know about an Australian comedian's dope comedy show happening this Saturday, 4 p.m. at the Angel Comedy Club. Uh, Angel, great comedy club. They have events on all the time. I don't know if anybody in London puts out more shows than Angel Comedy. Uh, This is a a one-off there in the afternoon, 4 p.m. at the Bill Murray, featuring Alice Fraser, Nick Sampson from New Zealand, Arnie Pye, Marek Platek, and Eric Pohl, who is an Australian bloke who is part of Angel. Uh, the show's just five quid, so if you're a little bit skint, I'll be there emceeing, drop in, say hello, and if you are a fan of the pod, get in touch. Say hello to me after the show. I'll be around. I'll probably drink a beer. You can drink one with me. I promise I'm a pretty friendly bloke. Uh, all right, let's just dive into this episode. Triggered. Last week, John Hastings got excited about Brexit, and I was like, wait a second, maybe other people who aren't English who aren't Scottish, who aren't Welsh, who aren't Northern Irish, are freaked out by this whole process. So I got in touch with some mates from around Europe. And the first one is my very good friend, George Zach. He's Greek originally, but he has lived in the UK for at least the last 10 years, as far as I know. Uh, I want to sit down with him, see how it's going to affect him, because if anyone is able to stay in this country, it would surely be him because he's been here for so long. Anyway, it's a good chat. It's an interesting chat with a man who I found out actually bet that Brexit was going to happen. So, you know, he's kind of got himself to blame on that one, but he does have some sweet winnings to help him out. We'll keep rolling out the Brexit episodes until the 29th of March, because apparently that's when the UK is scheduled to make their Brexit, to Brexit the way out of there, to never Brentree again, 29th of March. But... The Europeans have said, honestly, you can halt the process and stay in the U at any time, you fucking idiots, because you should. How very charitable. Anyway, jerk offs, fresh app, chat and Brexit, among many other things, with my good mate, Mr. George Zacharopoulos. He's so great. Yeah. Do you, want to, um, do you want to kick this thing off with a with a, a recommendation? A, a yeah, big up of another comedian. I'd like, yeah, I'd like to get him on. It's, it's, he's it's, from it's, Guinea? Uh, what? Like, Guinea. I'm pretty sure he's from Guinea. Guinea. Oh, okay, so black man, right? So anyway, no, like, Africa. Oh, no, I fuck because I looked it up because I was like, I was yeah. actually Oh, curious. are you going to look it up now? I'm going to look it up now. He's from Malawi. I, I, is Malawi? Malawi. Are you fucking serious? I'm, he's no, the only one. I'm an idiot. That's what I mean. That's why I looked it up because I was like, that's, you know, that last name. I haven't heard that. Like Chaponda. Chaponda. That's that's interesting. And then I looked it up and I'm like, fuck, I think for some reason, it's I because, think it's, it's because he's black. <laughs> <laughs> they have weird names. They have there. weird names. Well, I mean, imagine, I thought, imagine how Muggleton sounds though, to a black person who has never been outside Rwanda. I, yeah, it did sound fun. Um, sounds, but no, Malawi, what's, what's sounds the... Sounds fucking stupid. What's the language of Malawi? Well, Malawi. he said it at least, but I keep getting wrong, like Chachawi. Chachawi. Chachawi, something like that. In, in Malawi, they speak Chachawi? <laughs> yeah. They do. Fair enough. I think you're making that up. <laughs> I'm not. I wish I had made it up now. Uh, it, it sounds really made up. It does, yeah. Chachawi? But Chachawa? But that, but that happens, you know. I'm, I'm, into the, I'm into the NFL now. And you hear some of the names and you're like, fucking hell. 
like Ladanian. That's yeah, one. That's, that's one of like their best players, Ladanian. Ladanian. Like not yeah. even if you get rid of the lot, Danian's still weird. That's weird. Like, yeah. You know, like there's no way. Like it's it, they started with Dane. He's black too. Right? And then there's like he's black. Yeah. In fairness, I'm going to cut all of this. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> there's no way I'm starting an episode with two people just speculating on black names. <laughs> oh, guys, welcome to 90 to 93. This is cool. This is fun. Um, <laughs> Chaponda. Official language is English. You fucking dick. No, they had to speak to Chawi. Chichiwa. Chichiwa. Yeah, but that's not Chachawi. Yeah, but... Uh, it's not say, Chachawi in Malawi. I didn't, say, I didn't say I was getting it right. <laughs> I very much said I think it's Chachawi. <laughs> oh, man. I, like, I would really love to leave this in, but there's just no way. Like, you know, both of us have a shot at a career. Let's not ruin it. <laughs> Let's not I don't ruin see how already. this will be ruined if you get into Chachawi wrong. Uh, no, like, what, just, like, which, just both which of us just of, laughing which... about African words. Like, yeah, oh, but, my but God. It's fun. Hang on. Like, I come from a country when every time people hear my name, they go, oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, but that's but be- because I'm not because I'm not black. It's acceptable, right? Well, oh, God, now we now we might have to keep this in because I wanted to talk about this on Saturday night. Greek guy got offended at a show. Really? Yeah, I was like not not by the show. So where, where was it? Uh, backyard. Okay. At, by the by the door lady. The door lady offended this Greek dude because apparently she was trying to say his name. Okay. And like you know, she's a she's a door lady slash security. Like her reading level isn't great. Even so, if it was, it would be a fucking nightmare. And it was like Papadopoulos or something. And she had a couple... <laughs> I mean, I mean... She had a couple I mean, of runs said, at it. If you said Papadopoulos or something, <laughs> you, know, you, could, you could just add to his distress. <laughs> <laughs> As if I'm not even paying attention to it. But yeah, just um, apparently she was like, Papadopoulos, Papa, uh, so sorry, and like laughed. Yeah. And the guy was like, that was at the start of the night. This is the end of the night. He had to speak to the venue manager. He really? was like, I'm How offended. How was he? Oh, like 20s? What the fuck is people's problems nowadays? Like, he's exactly the kind of guy. Oh, they annoy me. So he got annoyed because his name could be pronounced. Yeah, because she couldn't say, because she laughed I would... at his name. And she was saying, because she, she's black, and he was saying, if I was black, like, that'd be so unacceptable. Yeah. And it's like, what? Yeah. No? <laughs> yeah, you, you have a stupid name, mate. Yeah, just like, it's, it's tricky. Like, you know, Muggleton, if people miss it, I'm like, yeah, look, that's okay. Yeah, no, like, it, it's weird because, um, like, <laughs> If people, like, he's the kind of person, I think he was in Greece, and yeah. you heard the name Entongo. Yeah. But within, beginning with an N. Yeah. You go, what's this? Right. So that's, if he's in Greece, it'd be... Yeah, that, that's weird. But now he's in Britain. Like, this well, it's, is, it's this nice is, this is a, a Greek immigrant who's fully integrated. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Because he's he found offense. <laughs> he's assimilated fully. He managed to find offense where there was none. Yeah. He, he, he ran the argument like, what if I was black? Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. That's, yeah. That, I think that's yeah. like the height of he, yeah. Britain-ness. He, he, he's British. Yeah. Give him a passport. Good on good on him. Yeah. He's made it. Mr. <laughs> Papadopoulos. <laughs> Mr. Papadopoulos. He comes through immigration every time. They're like, Papadopoulos, called. really? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, my first name's George. <laughs> uh, I, I find it quite nice if people try to uh, spell my name, uh, like pronounce it. Well, but but I was gonna I was gonna bring this up. Like you shortened your name for comedy purposes and now you've elongated it again? And yeah. you've gone back to the full? Yeah, because people kept telling me I was it like um I don't know. I thought George Zack sounds snappy, snazzy. Right. Yeah. Hey, it's George Zack. Who is that? That's kind George of Zack. I like it. Yeah, George Zack. Yeah. Man, boom, is, boom. is George Zack going to be here? Fuck, I hope George Zack comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah oh my God, I can't believe it's George Zack. He's the guy I've been with us <laughs> my entire life. Yeah. He's my comedy hero. George yeah, Zack. George Zack. Boom. But yeah. then, like, the more I went on, I was like, why is it Zack? Why have I shortened it? Because I figured George Zack. It's definitely easier to remember, but it's highly forgettable. Does it make sense? Well, it's it's easier to spell. Like it's easier to you know what I mean? Like yeah. oh, I gotta look up George Zach later. But yeah. it is Is this forgettable? Yeah, whereas what George was... Zacharopoulos, you're like, oh hello. Yeah, George Zacharopoulos, you forget what it's called, but you'll never forget you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make sense? I, l- I love that these Does are it the things. Does it make sense when someone goes, George Zacharopoulos, you go, I know this guy. <laughs> I love that these are the things you think about on your own. <laughs> just yeah. like, I bet a lot of people have never forgotten me. They just can't spell me. Yeah, yeah. They just don't know what I'm, they don't know what my name is. Yeah. But if they say it written somewhere, they go, yeah, I know this guy. I, I actually, I think that's very fair. I think if, if like you- Like Romesh Ranga Nathan. Yeah. Like people didn't know how to spell his name when he first started. Yeah. Romesh Ranga Nathan, fuck me. Like, what, what the name, right? That's a lot. Yeah. But now, even, even now people just can't pronounce it. But if they see it on the bill- they go, oh, it's that guy. Oh, you know, I've done some gigs with Ramesh's brother and he shortens his name. 
What is it? Ranga? No, no, no. He goes with Nathan. He just goes that. I think that's not to be associated with Ramesh. Like, I think he's kind of like, I want my own thing going on. Yeah. So maybe I've outed him here. But, what, what, yeah. What's his name? I'm not going to... I won't say his first name. I don't know. Because uh, he, I think he kind of low plays it. He is he like an open spot or is he... Oh, yeah. It's just like he's getting into it. Like, I think he used to do it a little bit. Now he's kind of coming back in. But I find that so crazy. Like, I, uh, I, why would you do that? I mean, yeah. If your brother's good at it, I mean, I don't have any siblings, but like... If, no, if and, and, is, and, we, and I can tell. <laughs> it's says, it's says, very, says you. You're the only <laughs> only child who's got siblings. <laughs> you have such an only child. <laughs> but like, if, if my brother was like sick at something that's like kind of fame thing, like you'd be like, no, absolutely not. Why would I ever? I'm just going to get compared to him. Yeah. Like that sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. But it, it seems to happen in comedy a lot. Like like the Johansons and shit. Like they're like there's like brothers in that family. Like um, who? I swear Peter Hansen's brother is a comedian as well. Really? Oh, no, maybe it's the other way. I thought you were talking about the Hansen, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the band. Like, they like, they, do, co- they yeah. do comedy now. They're all there. <laughs> all three Hansons now doing comedy. They've got a podcast. Um, but no, it, uh, yeah, like Pete, no, it's not. No, Brian Regan's brother is a comedian. Like Brian Regan, very famous American Yeah, comic. yeah, yeah. He's incredible. Yeah. He's one of the best comedians people haven't heard of. Yeah, no one in this country knows. Been in America is huge. Oh, but huge his, yeah. his brother does comedy. Like two of them are firemen, two of them are comedians. I remember reading that and being like, what? And then um, uh, Chris Rock's brother? Yeah, but apparently, um, like, who was it? Was it Chris Rock's brother that, like, claims the name way too much? I think so. I think maybe at the beginning he was yeah. kind of like, I'm Chris Rock's brother and then now he's quite good. Like yeah. that, that was, I think that's my understanding of like never having met him and not being I'm compl- in that scene. Yeah, but like, let's just speculate about people we will never meet. Yeah, why not? They're not, they're not listening. So you met uh, Ramesh's brother? Yeah. And that, but that, I, that's the thing. I was just like chatting to him and he was like, cool dude. And then he was talking to like someone else at the gig and they were like, oh, hey, like, you know, how's Ramesh? And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like initially just like, maybe this is a super racist. <laughs> like, <moment. Yeah. laughs> just like, just like, dude, I don't think. Any you're... news from back home? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think they all know each other, you know? <laughs> like, this is a bit strange, but yeah, no. And then he's like, oh, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I, which I, I kind of respect, like, just as a way to go about it. He's like, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to coattail it. Yeah, but ultimately, I think. So the, the way I elongated, the reason I elongated it was, mm. um, was two, like, well, there's a couple of reasons, really. I started doing solo shows mm-hmm. and I realized if it's George Akaropoulos, like um, the demographic in Australia, the, the Greeks. Yeah. Will, will uh, like, Cause they're like oh, get cool. on board. A Greek like, guy. Yeah, Greek guy. Yeah, so, I'm a Greek guy. Yeah. I'm a Greek girl. I'm, 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 a Greek I'm guy. going to see a Greek guy. Yeah, well, no, and, uh, totally valid. Based completely on that. Yeah. And then, um, and then I thought if I go to the festivals, I just want my, my, my proper name. Yeah. Um, but when I do clubs... It's just when you go to, 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 to a comedy club and they go, the compare comes and they go, what's mm. your name, man? Like, Zakharopoulos, so how do you pronounce it? I think just say Zach. Well, no, just make them say it. I get the shits because I, you know, you know me, I compare and shit and I just like, just say the name right. Yeah. Just like, it's like double check, triple check. Just yeah. say it right. It, it just Don't whip me- the piece of paper yeah. out. Like, how hard is your job that you just have to remember one name? Yeah. And just say it. Like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. People are like, ah, oh, but it's hard. Like, I get distracted up there. And like, how? <laughs> how? You're calling a guy a dickhead for wearing that kind of shirt. Then after that, you say a name. That's yeah. comparing. I mean, uh, I have to admit, I have forgotten many names whilst comparing. Uh, <laughs> so Hypocrite. Uh, so. That's the thing, because I never fuck up names. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm completely cognizant of the fact that it can happen. Mm. That's why I make their life easier. All right. George Zach. But um, now what I do is sometimes, if they like they put your name on the back, on, like, on, on, oh, on the yeah, background, on the, screen, yeah. on the screen, I ask them to put my full name, Zacharopoulos. Yeah. So when I go up, I have this opener. If they go George Zach, I go, well, obviously my name is George Zacharopoulos, but uh, this idiot couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, and now it's on the a, screen. Get a, get a quick laugh at the beginning. Quick laugh. Quick laugh. You want to get that laugh early? Yeah, man. Like a like know. a likable comedian George Zach. Because I've been going through your website and stuff. It's like incredibly likable. Oh, what an enjoyable boy. I am very likable. Well, I mean, as you know, when I met you, I did not like you at all. But on stage. On stage, you were fine. Yeah. But off stage, oof. Why did you not like me? Oh, you're just, you're so intense. Like, by the way, George, like, has come over to record this episode. I get him a glass of water. During that time, he's somehow found a tennis ball and just started bouncing it around my apartment. 
Yeah, I also found the um, royal family mugs. It's true. We got that, mugs. We're integrating. We want to stay here. We want to stay yeah, here after the Brexit. You're ironically collecting royal family mugs. Look, it's my, my girlfriend started it. She likes the royal family. She gets excited by the queen. She's like, let's get some Yeah, but it's not genuine though, is it? It's not genuine. No, it's, it's knockoff. Ro- and that's why it's funny. Yeah, it's ironic. No, she likes them genuinely. Like, she likes them if, genuinely. When the queen dies, she will cry for like a day. Really? Yeah, she loves it. The, the, people like the royal family. I mean, I don't really get it. Like, I'm just kind of like, okay. Like, they're just this kind of separate thing. Like, mm-hmm. You get to hear them talk occasionally and they do weird shit when they come on tour. But that, like, that's, 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 that's your perception of the royal family? Yeah, because like, in Australia, they're like, what is it? Uh, Harry and Meghan Markle like, did some like fluoro ceremony down at the beach for like depression. A what? Yeah, they're just like all dressed in like fluoro clothes. Like they were going to a rave. Oh, and, like, floral. F- fluoro. Like, What's fluoro? fluoro? Like, like highlighter colored. Like, you know, oh, fluorescent. Yes, fluoro. Fluoro. Yeah, of course, you're Australian. Yeah, you got a short <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Flu- <laughs> fluoro. Now, what the fuck is your name? Yeah, I forget that we really, everything is short <laughs> in Australia. Like, you know, yeah, we call our prime minister ScoMo. No. Yeah, that's what he calls himself. He Scomo. started the ScoMo. ScoMo. Scott, Scott Morrison, ScoMo. Oh, right. I thought it was like a Scomo. short for prime minister somehow. ScoMo. That's what he goes. That, yeah. Does he say like vote ScoMo? He, he voted. He's like, yeah, he's like, started calling himself ScoMo. That is like, great. Vote one for ScoMo. That is great. It's absurd. But no. Is, it, is, wait, there, is there more? another, is his brother also called Dave Morrison? And he, <laughs> wants, he wants to avoid any association. That's it. They want it. Just a lot of, a lot of the, a uh, lot of the, People couldn't pronounce his name, so he's like, just go with Scomo. Just, just go get with me on Scomo. stage. Is it on the polls or will it be Scomo? Or do you think the idiots will be looking for Scomo? Scomo. S C O M O. What a great name. <laughs> Scomo. But, but wait, you did so in Australia. One, one, more, one, more, one more thing about your name before we, we move beyond names. You got name heavy early on, but on Twitter and stuff, you're a Greek comedian. Easy, isn't it? But like, how was that available? Oh, <laughs> I. Did you have to pay a guy? No, I went. So I went on. Uh, I had it as Greek Geordie because mm. I'm based in Newcastle. Yeah. And uh, for your international uh, audience members. Uh, Newcastle upon time. Yeah, it's called, called Geordies, although I say international audience. Let's be honest, it's just me and you, isn't it? Uh, no, man. We get, we get, we, last, last week, we had like 30 people in Argentina. 30 people in Argentina? I don't know either. Really? Yeah, big in Who Argentina. Uh, like Phil Nickel. Okay. Not Argentinian. No. Intinian. No, just, you know, a lot of Argentinians got involved. Yeah, they liked it. Yeah. He's, he's a funny one, Phil. He is. Lovely dude. But no, so you went with Greek comedian and that was... So yeah, Greek Jordi. But I had considered Greek comedian. Yeah. And when I looked it up on Twitter, Greek comedian was taken by someone who hadn't tweeted once, right? Right. They just had it. So they just had it. Just in the bank. So... Did you message? Well, I did message. and I, I, I looked it up if I ever messaged. And four years ago, I had messaged this person saying, hey, can I have it? Right. And then never got a response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then yeah. like recently, I thought... Do you think this person is still on? So I looked it up and it goes off. And they are quick as a flash, man. Boom, boom, boom. See, I, I got a, I got, I, I've only got Dan Muggleton on Twitter and Instagram. And like, I've messaged the people I have Daniel. And the, and the guy on Twitter is an English dude. And he's like, yeah, man, we can switch. Just let me know how. And I just haven't followed up because I'm lazy. <laughs> but the other guy, the, the Instagram guy is an Australian dude. Like, what are the fucking odds? Two Daniel Muggletons? There's not a lot of Muggletons. Is it not all? No, like seriously, there's. I like really very, want to look it up now. There's very few, just Muggletons in the world. Really? Like we're a small, we're a small clan. Is Zacharopoulos common in Greece? Is it? I, right? um, yeah, not really. But I was in, um, I was in Sydney. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago, and I was in a barbecue, and some Greeks came in, and they were so Greek, like. <laughs> I am not, right, you know, they were, so Greek. They, 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 the they, they were the definition of the Australian Greeks. Like leather jacket? Yeah. Big, like, big bracelet? Like um, thick, th- thick bracelet? Th- thick bracelet. Uh, like uh, the, the shirt was three buttons undone. Nice. Love uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shaved, like, shaved chest though or hair? Oh, not shaved, mate. Are you crazy? Really? Like, no. Yeah, the real deal. Dude, the guys I know shave. They want to, the Greek dudes, they want to keep it clean. Yeah. They want to keep it crispy. And then there's, um, they had like, the attitude as well, you can tell, you can tell. Like it, when they walked in, <laughs> my, I a don't know, it's a, gay, it's a gay dad, but for Greeks. A Greek dad. A Greek dad. Yeah. It, uh, it, it just, it went on fire. It right? went off. Yeah, went yeah, 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 yeah. Like things were happening. And try to avoid them. Wait, instead of Greek dad, what about Alexander? <laughs> that no? is the worst thing you've ever come uh, up with. I'm try- I was trying to think of a good one. I'm trying to think of like Alexander. Something. Yeah, like Alexander. Like That is, that, that is, that is, that is racist. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. No, come on. It's like, it's got to be, 
there's so many there's so much Greek history. Sure, there's like a da that you can take. What? You know what I mean? Da. Like, is it like gay da? So yeah. it's like radar, gay da. Sure, yeah, but do you know how gay da came add. about? No. What? They saw the word radar. Yeah. And they put the gay at the front. Yeah. But, the, it, but it rhymes with ray. What? Because it rhymes with ray. Oh, yeah. How did you not? <laughs> I just, it, just, it just occurred to me. <laughs> you just thought they just put, yeah, like da, and then they just put gay. Yeah, gay, gay da. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah like, could it could be like, I don't know, like... But, like, why do you think there's no, like, lesbian da? Because like, lesbians are gay. I mean, but you don't refer to it that way. I think lesbian like, sounds offensive. Because it doesn't rhyme with Ray. <laughs> I think lesbian sounds offensive. Why does lesbian sound offensive? I don't know. To me, it sounds offensive. What? Like, I don't know why. Do you think lesbians find the term lesbian offensive? It, in my head, it should be gay. <laughs> what? I don't know why. <laughs> Every time I hear the word lesbian, I get uncomfortable. Because I think it's like, I think in time, it will be a, a, a word that will be eventually seen as offensive, I think. But they refer to themselves as lesbians. Well, you know, like there's people used to refer to themselves, people used to refer to themselves as something that's now become offensive too. Yeah, but like... I just... But like it's gay and lesbian Mardi Gras. You but know what I mean? Like they, want to, they want to differentiate from gay people. There's like, there's like same but, sex, which is like the group term. And then it's like gay, lesbian. But why do you have guys like taking L gay? L LGBTQI. Like yeah, but lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, asexual, intersex, I think. LGBTQIA plus. I don't why know. you have guys claimed gay? But that's but that's like the guys are gay and then like women are lesbians. Like but they're all homosexual. You know what I mean? It's just but, the come separation. On, but you've seen many times a girl come on and say, uh, I'm gay. Yeah, I but mean But you never see a guy say I'm a lesbian. Yeah, because I it's think... It's too specified. I think lesbian is a more specific term, but, like, I don't think Why? it's offensive. Mm, I just don't think it's well, right. But is it wasn't lesbian... I thought that was, like, a Greek thing. I thought that came from, like, the yeah, it comes of from the of Lesbos, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's even weirder that you're offended by this. You're offended as a Greek man? I am, I'm offended <laughs> on behalf of gay women. Gay, like, lesbian, really? I don't know why. I think in time I'll be right. Really? There okay. Will there will come a time when you will go, fuck, George was onto something. Like lesbians, offend I mean, look, a lot of things have become offensive that people would assume was fine. Yeah. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna definitively say no, but I just, I've never, I've never had it anyone ever say, old to me. "Don't call me a lesbian." Yeah, but it sounds unless you're old. talking to like a straight man. Or it sounds, like, it sounds old to me. Like, or like a, oh, she's a, she's a lesbian. Uh, she's gay. Mm. Does it make sense? I mean, I mean, gay is like a happier sounding word. But yeah, that's it's a, it's a great it, word. because it used to mean happy. Like, you know, like obviously it's a kind of lighter. It, it, it's so disgusting that men have like <laughs> fucking men everywhere. <laughs> they had to take the words. They couldn't, they couldn't share it with the world. Well, I mean. Gay. Yeah. I, I, I'm in, gay. In fairness, I don't know. Like you kind of you're kind of making this point so passionately. Now I'm less certain of myself <laughs> than when this began. But the thing is, like, I just know that we're not going to solve it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. There's, there's no, no chance. That, no, that thing where it's just like, just, it's just like just eventually, guys. just like two straight dudes being like, "Look, we need a judge's ruling on this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need to call up a homosexual <laughs> comedian of some description yeah. and be like, is that been offensive to anyone?'" Like, I, I have discussed it with. Um, Friends of mine who are uh, girls, yes, and they're gay, yes, and they, they they insist on being called gay, and no, and they say lesbian is fine, but it, to me it sounds weird. <laughs> Can so I just you've said this to lesbians and they're like, yeah, 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 no, we're fine with it, yeah, yeah, my, and you'll be like, friends, well, my, I think my, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm completely on my own here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest mansplaining I'm, than this. I'm, I'm so, yeah, this is mansplaining. Not even that, just to another guy. Being like, maybe yeah. I can convince him. Yeah. And if we get enough straight dudes to agree with me, we can tell the women that they're wrong. <laughs> oh my God. I just, I'm I so said, sorry for everyone's last seven minutes of their life. Just so being what? like, maybe George is making a good point. Wait a second. He's already excluded himself from this. Oh yeah. Like I, I, I remember like, because I've got like, um, it would sound weird if I say I've got some really good friends where I give, you know gay girls, but I do. I think, I think they, it's they, fine. Go, you know, like it's like saying, "Hey, that's all right. I've got a black friend." Yeah, I mean, but, I don't know. But you're just like you're. you're but I, I, I discussed it with them. Said, Are you gay? Being called lesbian, and they were like, "Yeah." I'm like, I don't think I, I think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then you're not friends with them anymore. Yeah, yeah we're really good friends still. Oh man, just appreciate. Do you know? Uh, <laughs> this is such a bizarre discussion. All right, okay, get this right. Uh, speaking of, there's, you know, there's no way you can make this point more poorly than you already have. So I am. I'm fully <laughs> aware. I'm again. fully aware how alone I am in this. But the world needs pioneers. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna lead these women. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take charge here. I'm an ally. Yeah, you guys, like, you guys don't know what's wrong for you. Just I be know. fucking gay. <laughs> Why can't you just be fucking gay? <laughs> oh my god, I love that I got you on here because I'm like, I want to speak to European people living in the UK about Brexit and all that shit. And you're like, all right, let's just talk about same sex stuff for a little bit. This opinion that is completely unfounded yeah, and black names <laughs> and black names. <laughs> I see that's what we discuss so far. Is, I've just, I've so, never wanted to restart a podcast so badly. <laughs> I've just been like, I think we just been that. Start again. So hang on. Uh, by the way, uh, because you said something earlier uh, about how things do become offensive. Yes. You know that uh, Christmas song that... Um, a Baby is Cold Outside. That one? No. Oh. The other one. People find, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's a song that people find offense to nowadays as well. No, yeah. it's the other one that goes... Um, um, what's it called? At, the, at some point it says the word EF, it says faggot. Really? What Christmas song is that? You don't know that? No, I mean I'm not really into caroling. Oh, you know what? Do you, no, can, can no. I get up and get my phone? No, I mean we never look anything up. I put it at the end. Do you, do you like? Do you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for real. Like a, a people, Christmas- in, people in Argentina, strap yourselves in. Oh my god, Christmas Carol, faggot. All right. Are you sure, George? This is this has become a very a oh, fairy tale of New York. Yeah, fairy tale of New it? York. What? Why do they say that, Nick? Hmm? Why do they say that? Like why why do you do you understand like the context of the thing? Mm. Oh wait, you scumbag, you maggot, you cheap lousy faggot. Whoa. Yeah. Happy Christmas, your ass. I pray to God it's our last. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Is this is like a You meme? scumbag, you maggot, you cheap lazy. Oh the pokes. Fuck. Right. This is yeah, okay. I know this song now. So uh that song, right? When I first heard it, yeah. I thought to myself, I'm pretty sure that's offensive. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. But you I'm, can't say if I get in the Christmas song. Yeah. It's, it's offensive on many levels. So I was telling my friends this. Do you think it's offensive? Do you think it's offensive? Yeah. We're like, nah, it's a song. And like five years later, yeah. people are now making a big fuss about it, going, <laughs> it's offensive. Like, I was, I wait, was, wait a I second, was ahead of wait the Wait a curve. second. Are you using this to justify <laughs> that you <laughs> might know. be right in five <laughs> <know>. years? <laughs> <laughs> but, but listen. This is you, thoroughly. This. I love that to, to support your, like, no, I was bang on about the same sex stuff. I'm going to just say the word faggot a bunch of times to but, demonstrate but, my point. But, but, this is shameless, but, George but, Zach. But, but, this is shameless. But this song, right? I was telling everybody. I don't think it's offensive. I think it's offensive. Like, how can we still listen to this song? It's, it's disgusting. People yeah. are like, hey, it's, it's, it's a song. And now people are like, kicking off about it. And they're going, oh, you should ban it. And the moment people start saying you should ban it, I've suddenly gone, I think it's all right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just hate people who try to ban shit. You are an incredibly if, difficult human being. If you try, <laughs> for me, if you try to, like, in a very militant way, try to ban something. Yeah. Like, to me, I would then come out and say, I think we should support it, guys. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I'm always a bit like that as well. All I'm saying but is... Like, but this is, this is your royal, royal mug collection. Yeah. You know, this is like just going against the grain for the fun of it. It's not the fun of it. I think it's just you should, be, you should not be banning things. Well, like, think, just don't listen to it, but don't ban the song. Yeah, I mean, I think banning is always... I just never... It never seems good. It people, never seems like the way to solve this is for no one to be able to talk about it ever again or be yeah. exposed people to it. People are banning uh, the... Uh. Um, uh, uh, how to kill a mockingbird? To kill a mockingbird. Why? Because it has the N word in it. Yeah, but they've, they've done it. Like they've been trying to get that out of like Mark Twain and shit as well. Yeah, which and, is just weird. It's and, like uh, it's got a historical context. Yeah, like, to, to kill a mockingbird is about a guy trying to help a black person out. Yeah, I know. And suddenly, because of the N word is in it, referring yeah. to the early 1900s. But like, I, I think like you got to remember, this is not like the majority of people like with banning stuff. It's never the majority of people. It's come out of the curriculum like, in America. It's like 50 loud people. No, it, no, but 50 loud people that then inflict that upon a few million. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like this. Like, I wasn't even aware of this bloody song, really. Like, you know, and you're like, oh, there's a lot of movement to ban it. Like, what? Yeah, I don't yeah. do anything during the day. I should be aware of stuff like that. Yeah, what are you doing? I don't know. Sitting hey. around, playing with a tennis ball. It's good well, stuff. It's, it's a good ball. <laughs> <laughs> I admire Just your mug collection. Throwing it against the wall. Well, look. Let's get. I want to get in. I want to get into this Brexit stuff because the re- the reason <coughs> I had I had you know I don't really think about the Brexit stuff too much, 
being here. Do you? Because mm-hmm. like, I assume you're here on like an EU kind of visa. Yeah, EU yeah. thing. So like, yeah, because basically I had John Hastings on. Like mm-hmm. he was Canadian and he was like fired up. He was like fired up about Brexit. And I was like, why? Like this, this ain't your team plant. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, just chill. But then I got me thinking like, well, I know a lot of European comedians in the UK and like, is this going to fuck them? It is going to, um, in a way, probably fuck us. Like, um, I do find it funny that uh, Hastings was like uh, fired up about Brexit. But the same with like when we get fired up about Trump, mm. people go like, Trump, you got mate, you're from Sunderland. <laughs> do you care? <laughs> Oh, look, Trump's like, policies are really yeah, affecting Sunderland, yeah. man. How, how the you? Black Cats are not doing too well no more. <laughs> yeah, That's Sunderland, you? right? Was that? Black Cats, the football yeah, team? Black Cats. I yeah, think so, yeah. I think so. Nice one. I don't, I'm just trying to learn about your country. Yeah. Um, well, your country. I say your country because this is your country. I do feel like it's my country. Yeah, you've well. been here how long? 10? 10 years? 17. 17? 17. What the fuck? I know. 17, 17 years. 17 years. I thought you came here for uni. Yeah, I came here for uni. Are you older than I assume? I, I came here when I was like 17. Oh, shit. All yeah. right. That makes more sense. I thought, I thought you were here like, you know, 21 around that vibe. Uh-huh. Um, but no, 17 years is a long time. And you've basically lived here the whole time, right? There was yeah, no... Yeah. There was no there was, you go back and visit, but... Well, I came as a student, so like I would go back every summer and Christmas and Easter. Yeah. Uh, like uh, when school wasn't on. Yeah. But then uh, there came a point when I just uh, wasn't going back as much. Yeah. And they had... I'm not saying the fact that the army was looking for me <laughs> had a lot to do with it, but it definitely contributed. Well, that's the thing. I looked look that up because national service is yeah, yeah. compulsory. Yeah, I have to like a 12 months. Of 12 national months. Of national service. Is that when you finish high school or when you finish university? Well, you finish high school, you get re- like, um, what they call it? Conscripted. Conscripted. Yeah. But um, you can extend it yeah. if you go to uni. Okay, sure. So you put uh, it off. And then I put it off. Yeah. So I, I finished uni like in seven years as opposed to like three because <laughs> I was dropping out a lot <laughs> sure. to prolong the inevitable. Yeah, yeah, right. But then I realized I don't have to prolong the inevitable. The inevitable. All I have to do is just not go back. <laughs> <laughs> why, why worry? So, uh, I can just not live here. Yeah, I could just, I could just live in England. And then, it's um, very hard to serve in the Greek army when you're in Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also like it's unpaid. What? Oh, that's when everybody kick. That's when every non-Greek person, like, uh, finds a massive to go. Twelve months in the army, yeah, unpaid. What? But yeah, do you get like you get bored, obviously. Like, you get bored. You don't like paying for food and rent. Well, th- supposedly they're paying you every month, but then they keep you the money to pay for your board and food. Oh, that's um slavery. That that is what slavery. <laughs> yeah. That is slavery. <laughs> that is so slavery. look, we're paying you, but the pay is actually going straight into the food yeah, yeah, and yeah. the accommodation you already had. Yeah, so yeah. there's no money for you. What? I'm sorry, but I'm still working. Yeah, slavery. <laughs> yeah, this is how it works. I know it's a pyramid scheme, but like, come on. So um, yeah, okay. So you just dodged that. Yeah, I dodged that. Seven years at university in Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Which which university? Northumbria. Northumbria. Is Which that, is the least good one. Is that the poly or the... No, the poly, yeah. yeah. It's a poly, yeah. Because I had Lauren Patterson on. I learned about poly versus posh. Yeah, like... Um, no, poly isn't posh. No, poly versus posh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like the two. The polytechnic or the posh yeah, yeah, university. Yeah. So you're at the less posh one. Seven that, years. That's the same Lauren went to. Oh, really? There mm-hmm. you go. Um, did So did you have to pay to study here? When like, I first came, uni was free. But when I finished, you were paying. <laughs> <laughs> You're at university long enough for the policy to change. Yeah, I saw, I saw the, I saw the law transform, not to my benefits. I like that you were just like part of the thing. This argument, we got this fucking Greek guy. He's still studying. Yeah, yeah. I think we have got to put some money into this to so, get him out. So I did that, and then, yeah. um, and then um, I haven't gone back. Um, but I think you know, I love it. And that's why I'm not going back. It's yeah. not, it's not you, the army thing. I know a few people who like kind of come to this country through Newcastle, which I find funny because like in my head, you kind of if who you're going to move, uh, Nico, you were, was the same. Nico came through Newcastle? Yeah, dude. He, oh, yeah, he yeah, studied he there. I forgot that. Yeah, no, because like... So you, told, you, know, like a, you know two. I know two, and that's enough. Um, but no, like it seems like it's kind of like a welcoming way to get into the UK, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of smaller, door. it's like friendly. Through the back door. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just kind of smooth, you know? London is expensive, there's a lot of pressure. Newcastle like, ah, just chill out. Have Newcastle, Manchester. Yeah, it's kind of nicer. Really good cities. Because you still live there, 17 years. Well, kind of. Yeah. I you're still, you're I mean, a man on the road. You're I road man. I travel. A I'm road, a road man. man. That's a different thing. I'm a I road about man. That. Is that the song? No, the the road man, like the kind of tough drug dealer dudes. Road men. No. Street guys. 
Is that what you call them in Newcastle? No, that, that's what they call them in the Sopranos. <laughs> street guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> and the wire. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. The street guys. Well, yeah, apparently in London it's roadmen. You're, you're a roadman. Really? Yeah. Like in the corners? Yeah. In America, right? Yeah, yeah, on the corners. Here it's like... Here Common it's, has a song. Here it's in the States and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Roadman. No, I'm a... But yeah, so you, you've stayed up there the whole yeah. time. I'm a street warrior. Street warrior. Well, that's, <laughs> that's untrue. Um, but yeah, and, and then you just started doing comedy. Uh, yeah. Wow. So, did you start at university or did you start after? No, I started after. So um, I was doing comedy. Um, I did my first gig on St. Patrick's Day. Yes. One year. And he goes, I don't know about how you started it, but I started it to like take a box. To take a box? Yeah. So I, to, in my head. Oh, like a bucket list thing? A bucket list thing, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, no. but it was, it was weird because um, nine months before I did my first ever gig, yeah. I was completely unaware of the format. Yeah. It, I, I, di I didn't know stand-up comedy existed. I didn't know anything is, about that. Is there comedy in Greece? I mean, I assume if you get Greek comedian on Twitter, there's probably not a huge scene. <laughs> there is, there no, is. It's not Greek comedian one, by the way. It's just Greek <laughs> comedian. Like that's yeah. the whole thing. Greek comedian. There, there is, there is now. Um, okay. But uh, when I left, there, there also was. I just never knew about it. Right. And then, but it was like really, really embryonic. And then. Um, and now it's grown. And now it's grown. So wait, when did you leave? Sorry, I, I didn't do the math. Now probably 2002. I left in uh, 01. 01. September. Wow. Um, I flew here three days after 9-11 a great time to fly <laughs> get the fuck out of here yeah, really yeah. Jesus my first ever like long haul flight well not long haul but like it was a four hour flight yeah it was which my sec is... the second flight I've ever taken in my life and you just and, went um, to Newcastle Uni mm -hmm. just like did, had you been to the UK before never been to the UK before what you just like got the plane to study just, like, yeah and like, i was like 17 like in the past and like the, yeah. thing, the, the wave the family waves i waved my, and my, <laughs> my mom my mom was uh, pregnant at the time and wow. um, and uh, she was meant to fly with me yeah so she, she was going to fly to, with you she was going to fly with me and then we were watching i mean obviously sad moments terrifying moments yeah watching the planes crash into the world trade center and then when like that that night she turned to me she went yeah, I'm not coming with you. You fly. You fly. You're going, you're going alone. I've got a family. Uh, <laughs> so, so I flew. I like that she never said you're not going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was <laughs> She's like, I'm not going. Yeah, you can yeah. make your own decision. Yeah. So her and my dad drove wow. me to. They drove me to Athens. Yeah. And um, I went. Like I went on the plane. I had no idea where I was going. Yeah. I, I knew nothing. So, uh, but how'd you pick Newcastle University in England? Because like, completely by chance. So, but like, how does do that you, even? Do you know, okay. So this is the story. Because I, I don't even know how like you guys kind of apply for universities so here. I, do you apply across the whole EU? So I, I finished. No, so I finished school. Yeah. And I got my grades, and yeah. they were all right. Yeah. And um, my parents. I was the first, the first born, so I was the oldest one. Mm. My parents are not academic. My dad is a, like a truck driver. Yeah. So they didn't know anything about uni. Sure. So they went, they didn't say, you know, in a very simple way, they didn't think, what would you like to do? Mm. They thought, what are you good at? Uh-huh. So they were like, George, don't, like, what do you want to do? I'm like, oh, I really want to study computers. Uh, yeah. And that's what I want to do, like computer science. And they were like, but you flunk maths. How are you going to do computers? Okay. There was no one there to tell us, He'll be fine. <laughs> right. It was just a very practical. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, he'll, he'll be... Computers are maths. You're bad at maths. That's out. That's it. You're out. <laughs> what, what do you do well in? Biology and chemistry. How do you like mesh these two? Biochemistry. Fuck it. You're doing biochemistry. So, so they chose what you were going to study. So that pretty much like. It was, it was like a, a family thing. It was a family thing. And then I That's came. That's interesting. And then I came here. So I'm applying for biochemistry in Greece, in the Greek universities. And yeah. I got, I'm just short of the base requirements. Oh, so you didn't get into the so Greek was, universities. Was, it looked like I wasn't going to get into it. Right. And um, uh, actually, it's a, it's a great story about how little moments um, affect your entire life. Yeah. So, so um, as I'm thinking what I'm going to do, there was a Greek, uh, an English guy who's uh, doing an outpost for Cambridge University in my hometown. Right, and he which was is like Kalamata. A, Kalamata, Home yeah. of the olive. Kalamata the olive. olive. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, we were, um, we, like, my mom comes from a small village up in the mountains. And he's got a house. He's a neighbor there. And I met him. Yeah. And he said, why don't you just study in England? He's an English guy. Right. Uh, he was like, study in England. It's great. Um, 
And I was like, well, I never considered this. And my English was good. Yeah. I was like, oh. I why, never... why was your English good? Do because great... I, I, Do you guys I, learn English yeah, young? Yeah. yeah, very young. Like same as like, I know nothing's like when you're like eight, you yeah, start same. English. Yeah, same. I, I, it's normally eight, but I told my mom I want to start at seven. Wow. I was really keen. I For English? Know. Yeah. Interesting. So um, he said, he said, come to, uh, go, go to England. And there was this thing happening in, in August yeah. in um, uh, Athens. Yeah. Called clearing. And basically when universities have spare places, right. they go to Athens and they allocate the last few places. Wait, it's called clearing? It's called clearing. So it's like a clearance sale it's but a, for university places? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, That's fucking amazing. Is everyone in a big room and you hold up like a number? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have signs. Yeah, they have like, signs. Fuck it, it's me. Yeah. 99, yeah, it's, 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 got, it's got to go today. It's like a, like a draft, but for losers. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the opposite of a draft. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody who didn't get picked, you're in this yeah. room now. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i love that so, i want to see that but there's a, it's a well-known process in england clearing oh it's here as well yeah they do clearing wow but yeah. like they, so they go to greece for the clearing they, they have little stalls like you know a fair and like right. in, 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 the, the, in, the, in the hilton yeah, yeah, in yeah the yeah. hilton function room and use like 30 universities obviously oxford and cambridge and essex are not there because they don't care yeah like, of course they're no, like, like, we've actually allocated all that place they've oversubscribed yeah but um then Northumbria was there. So are they there to sell to you or are you there to pitch yourself so to you, them? So you, you go to them yeah. and you take all your qualifications. Right. And then you go to them and then you chat and they go, so what do you want to study? Yeah. And you tell them what you want to study. They look up the base level requirements, yeah. which are slightly lowered <laughs> because it's clearing. <laughs> it's clearing, baby. Yeah, that's right, baby. Knock another Every, five points <laughs> off. Everything's got to go. <laughs> 50%, 50 off. That's so funny. <laughs> so... um. They they look at the best level requirements. They look at your papers. Yeah. Then they have a chat with you, which is the interview process. Yeah. It's very short. See if you can like how is your English stuff like that. Yeah. And then they offer you a place in the university or not? Like there and then? Like yeah, in the room? there and then. Wow. So I went there and I had offers from pretty much everyone, and uh, that guy Bob um, pulled the strings, pulled some strings for me to be able to get uh, like an offer from Swansea. Right, Wales. Yeah, yeah. The horrible because this, this man is Wales. English, but he's lived in Greece long enough to, <laughs> <laughs> to understand corruption. <laughs> <laughs> he's assimilated. He, he went. He like went. He went. Guy. I'll pull some strings. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Bob's your like, uncle, mate. <laughs> <laughs> like the great guy getting offended by the name. Yeah, 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 Bob's yeah, yeah, the yeah, Greek yeah. equivalent of that. Yeah, he, Bob knows. I pulled some strings. Yeah, you're in. <laughs> so, uh, I got accepted by Newcastle as well. And I ring Bob. Yeah. And I said. Where should I go? Yeah. And Bob went, Newcastle is really fun. Right, just as a place. Yeah, Newcastle is a very fun place. Because it's a bit of a university town, right? Yeah, yeah. It's got that. He yeah. said Newcastle is fun. So I just went, all right, I guess Newcastle it is. So that, so the first conversation with Bob happened maybe the 10th of August. Yeah. I, got, I went to the clearing on the 28th of August. And on the 14th of September, I was in Newcastle. Fuck me. That's so quick. Yeah. That's a month. A month. So I found myself in Newcastle and I had lost my luggage and I was so unprepared. Underprepared. I had like shorts and a t-shirt because it was 34 degrees in Kalamata. Yeah. But in Newcastle it was nine and I'm freezing <laughs> and I've got no clothes and I went to my halls of residence and my room wasn't ready yet. Yeah. And the next day I found my room and gave me a room and I went in and I found a spare uh, pair of trousers. Someone forgot and they were like four sizes bigger. But it was so cold, I put them on and then I got a pen and I put the pen between the, 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 the seat belt, uh, the, not the, the, belt the, 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 the belt buckle, like yeah. in your trousers. Yeah. And, I, and I spun the pen around like a helicopter, like a um, thing. Yeah. So like it started like uh, grabbing up uh, and shortening the... the right, the, 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 the drawstring. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A, uh, so basically I, I, I got it tight and I was wearing these pants for four days until my trousers arrived. <laughs> And they You're arrived. Like just the biggest kind of homeschool kid ever. Just like, look at the big wide world. And George is there with his pen pants. Yeah. Like, Hello. <laughs> Can never understand my yeah. accent. So, so I, I arrived like that. Yeah. And then, um, and then this is the how like a little moments really affect your, mm. um, your life. Yeah. Like on the 20, towards the end of September, it was like a Wednesday. Yeah. And you would go, you, we had Freshers Week. Yeah. Everybody was getting shit faced. Mm. It was great. I was getting drunk. Not much of a drunk drinking culture in Greece, but I 
quickly understood the joys of drinking. <laughs> so I was in, I was in on it. Like, and one day I wake up and I'm slightly hungover, and I go to my mate's room. His name is Tom. He's still my best friend. Really? Like, like I'm, I'm from, seeing him tonight. From day one. Yeah, yeah I'm, see, I'm seeing him tonight. That's cool. That's He's the nice. guy I went on a naked bike ride with. Naked like, bike ride. You, you, you heard me do that bit of material, haven't you? you Maybe. Forgot. Like he's he like he's, he's, like, he's the guy. He's featured in a lot of my shows. He's is, like. Is he English? Yeah, he's English. From Newcastle? No, from outside Manchester. Okay. But he works in the city now. He has like a sick job. Yeah, uh, and he's your he's your guy. And he's like he's like from uh, day one. From day one. You showed you the, but the thing I was going to say: Were your parents like really upset that you were going, or they? Like, yeah, my mom was upset. Because like, you know my, you hear like the close knit Greek family. Yeah, my, and my here mom. And they're just like go away and you know. So there's a Texas and my is mom. Is Kalamata small? It's like forty thousand. Wow. So yeah. my my mom was uh, for years she had this old ass phone mm-hmm. and on that phone she had saved a text message which was a, a text message I sent her when I was on the plane saying I'm leaving <laughs> 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 and, she, and she said she cried when she read it. Now if you you were so sad about it you should have been in the same fucking plane mother. <laughs> Well, at least you had two seats. I yeah. Mean, that's nice. <laughs> so, so Tom is in the room. Like he's getting stoned, right? Yeah. I've never been around drugs before in my life. Yeah. Um, so it's a completely brand new thing to me. Yeah. Like drinks, completely brand new thing. Drugs, uh, completely brand new. I never did any. Yeah. Like I did drugs like f- for the first time four years ago. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that you remember like that, when right? we just met. You, you, you remember just, my awakening? Yeah, you just done it for like the first time. And you're like like a, like an excitable boy at a music festival. Yeah, yeah, I was loving it. So, but back yeah. then I was just I was just enjoying being in that culture. So the Simpsons are playing on TV, and <laughs> Tom is watching the Simpsons. He's getting stoned. I'm in his room. We're chilling, and the phone rings. It's my mom, and she goes, "Right, we got your results from the Greek university applications, and you've been accepted to a, a city called Arta." Sure. Um, which is like 10,000 people, if that. Right. Right? Um, for computer science. Which is what you wanted to do. Which is what I wanted to do, right? And so she, she, goes, she, goes, she goes, she goes, she goes, she goes, she goes, she goes, it's a brand new school. It just opened. Right. So probably it's better than what the grades suggest. Sure. Because they're yeah. just trying to get people in. Yeah. yeah. Um, she goes, um, so what do you think? Do you want to come down and study that in Narta? And then I realized I can go back to a 10,000 city place mm. with probably boring people. Yeah. Or, like, I can hang out with this guy who's getting stoned watching The Simpsons <laughs> and just went, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> but I, that was a decision. Like, if I yeah. said, yeah, I'm coming down, my life would have been completely different. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing comedy. I would be working as a fucking lab technician somewhere. I mean, but, that, that's, it sounds like you made the wrong decision. In, um, in so many accounts, in so many ways. <laughs> but it's true. Like, the, yeah. like if people, like I can see that as a moment in my life, right? That defined everything. Yeah, and I, and it was just a very easy decision. I was like, now nah, I'll stay. Yeah, this seems good already. Even yeah. though it was not easy, like in the beginning, by the sounds of it, it wasn't like just a smooth easy. transition. It wasn't. <laughs> but I just loved it. I loved it. So I've stayed since. Yeah. So. Yeah, Brexit is a bit of an issue because... Um, I mean, sorry, before we get deep in, you, one thing I like is, uh, I remember this from one of your shows, you, when the Greek financial crisis was happening, which is like pre-Brexit, let's go chronological. Yeah, yeah. Greek financial crisis, you were put on a bunch of shows to talk about it. Yes. And, and it went quite poorly. Did yep. it? <laughs> <laughs> it went so bad. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you think of like George talking about the word lesbian was dicey, here we go. I did, Complex I did. financial thing for the uh, man who was bad at maths when he was seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, I did. Um, um, I did a show called Greek Tragedy. Greek Tragedy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was my debut hour. Yeah. And I, I tanked it so hard. Yeah, it was bad. Just, bad show. It didn't go well in uh, Edinburgh. Yeah. Or Perth. Right. It, it went okay in Melbourne. But it was just a fucking drag, that show. Yeah, um, but it had stuff about the Greek financial crisis? Did. Or that led to people seeing, it was like, hey, we got a Greek comedian. Finally. Yeah, yeah. Finally, we get some, some financial some insights he had some from stuff. this funny man. Yeah. yeah. And then and then I went to, um, I went on TV on this show called The One the, the one Show. And then on uh, something called This Week. This Week. It's with Andrew Neal. It's on Thursday nights. It's live. It's live. On BBC One. Oh, shit. Yeah, and it's right. like a... <laughs> Pretty eminent politics show. Okay. So it's not supposed to be funny? 
It's meant to be a little bit fun. It's like quirky, but definitely political. Right. So and the main thrust is political. Maybe a laugh every now and yeah. again. Sure. And uh, I went on and I had, a, <laughs> if I remember, I had one. Um, I had this, one this, is like, I had, this is like a big thing. Like uh, you're yeah. like a comedian who's like not established. You're on BBC One. Oh, yeah. This could be massive. Yeah. And I went on. <laughs> and I had, First off, they made me do like a, a, a recording. Yeah. Like, a, you know, like a preamble to the panel conversation. Sure. And I did a recording during which they asked me if it's okay for me to smash a plate. It was very degrading. <laughs> <laughs> BBC One made me smash a plate. <laughs> Is it okay for you to smash a plate? And there's a video somewhere on YouTube of me smashing a plate. Fuck, I, if I can find it, I promise I will put that in the description for this episode. Uh, it's I want to see that. Absolutely horrendous. And so then, you agreed, obviously. Uh, of course I agreed. Obviously. I thought it was a BBC. Like, yeah, okay. Of course. I'll do it. And then, <laughs> and then I went on and we're discussing... Um, do they have like a plate, like a sec, like two plates, just in case you didn't smash the first <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah, we had lots of plates. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, um, <laughs> and then they had like... Guy, the, the idea was that someone was spinning plates. Yeah. Which was the Greek prime minister was doing at the time. He was spinning plates. Oh, okay. That's and, then like I said, and then I said, what do you think of this idea? And they had written the script for it. Yeah. And they went, what do you think of the idea of the plate spinning? I said, it's all right. As long as you don't ask me to smash one, you'll be okay. And they went, that's a great idea. Can you do this? I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't make me... Can yeah. you do that, actually? Yeah, yeah. You don't uh, want to do it. As long as you don't make me do it, it'll be all right. That's great. Can you do it? Yes, I can. <laughs> that's, that's how it went. <laughs> that's that, that's that uh, British politeness yeah. coming out. Absolutely. I'll do whatever. And then, and then um, man, it was uh, 200 pounds. Like, Sounds good. Sign yeah, me up. Great money. So I went on and he asked me about the Greek crisis. Yeah. And he said, what did you think? And I, I didn't know much about it. Yeah. You did some research for you. I did some research. Thank God. But I, I, yeah. did, I did ask Johnny Pelham, who studied politics. <laughs> and he went, don't ask me about your country. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Pelham, by the way, is just another comedian. Like, yeah. This isn't like a guy who studied politics and now is like in politics. Yeah. He was just, just another was clown. Like, hey, do you, have, do, you have, do you have an idea what's happening in Greece? And he's like, no. <laughs> and then, Why don't you ask your parents? Why don't you ask like somebody in Greece? And then I did this thing. I, I went on. I went on TV and I said, uh, "He said, w what do you think? What do you think about the, the crisis?" Yeah. And I, I went, "Look, Andrew, call me." I said this. I said, "Call me an idiot. Call me an idiot." Right. Good start. Right. But if you think about it, I've looked it up, and Greece owes three hundred and forty billion euros. Yeah. But there's only like 10 million of us. Sure. Which means that every single Greek citizen owes 3.4 like million euros. Yeah. It's a ridiculous number. Like 3.4 million per person. Now, what do you think we did with it? Like, I was really angry thinking about this number as I was coming here in my private jet. <laughs> right? Good joke. Good joke. Good little Good gag. Joke. Little, little gag. Good TV friendly uh, gag. Little, little gag. Yeah. And then I just like sat down smirking to myself thinking... Did, did a joke on BBC One. <laughs> did a joke on BBC One. That's great. And Andrew Neil, yeah, he does like Andrew Neil does like live election time, the referendum. He's a man. Yeah, he's the guy. He's a guy. He looks up and he went, um, <laughs> three hundred and forty billion euros divided by ten million Greeks isn't three point four million. Is thirty four thousand per person, which is quite reasonable considering infrastructure <laughs> 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 and interest repayments. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> I think your being bad at maths has been thorough. Like you know what I mean. Throughout the podcast, like he's bad at maths. Computer so, science would have been a bad choice. So that's how uh, BBC One went. Really? Did like, you get asked back? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I did get asked back. Do you know why? Why? Because they thought the mistake I made was intentional. And uh, <laughs> British people, that is where your uh, TV license money is going to. That's true. TV license, I don't pay it. You shouldn't either. <laughs> Netflix forever. Netflix forever. Um, man, that's beautiful. Yeah, because I mean, it's funny because like, it means you're bad at maths, which implies, yeah, it's good. I mean, if you look at it as a proper gag, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you know that you're trying to be clever, <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. Uh, <laughs> oh, all right. So, yeah, Greek financial crisis. Um, was that part of you staying here? Was that, any, that factor No, that had all? nothing to do with it. Yeah, I figured not. I was in no way better off. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I was, yeah. There was a time when I was doing door-to-door -door sales. 
Really? You were the door-to-door knock-on? Yeah. You want to buy these steak knives? S- selling broadband connections. Broadband. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. And landline. And landline. Landline. Jeez, that's and a the tough pe- sell. Mate, and people were like, it was, a, it was a definitely better deal yeah. than the one I had compared to BT. Uh, and I would, go, <laughs> I would go there and go, look, you can save like three pounds a month on your line rental. Yeah. Plus maybe another 10 pounds a month on your phone calls. Yeah. People would go, no. They'll go, mate, that is 12 pounds a month. Like, that is a lot of money, right? <laughs> like 13 pounds a month. Like, you could save 13 pounds a month. Yeah. Are you mental? But if someone came to me and they said, you can save 10 pounds a month, all you have to do is just let me in your house and sign some documents. I would go, absolutely not. Yeah. Ne- under I'll, no I'll pay cir- you 10 pounds a month to leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> under no circumstances <laughs> will I accept this deal. <laughs> Yeah. There was once I went in the house and there was um and I I was signing this lady up and she was like sixty yeah the husband is like sixty five very nice old people in the Kalayal like old farmers you know I, I assume old people are kind of like the target demo for door to door sales you know yeah but but you can't get someone who's like over like seventy yeah because it might be like not with it sure so you have to like get people who are like you know uh, compusmentes yeah 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 right um I guess yeah. So I am, uh, I'm signing them up. And the man went, that is a, a great little deal that BT are doing. And I said, oh, uh, this, is, this, is not BT, this is not British Telecom. Yeah. This is Talk Talk. Uh, we, we have the same repair engineers as British Telecom. So if your line gets faulty, mm. you don't have to worry about it. But to provide that would be talk talk, and that's, it was a time when monopoly was it was all British Telecom, and it was right. just it had it had become like um, uh, denationalized. So now anybody can get into the right. landline business. Yeah, yeah. So it was and nationalized, like, and they opened it up, yeah. and then talk talk is one of the yeah. competitors. Gotcha. And I, and I went, it's talk talk, and the man looks at me, and goes, "You are not British Telecom." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "No, I'm not." And he got up, went above the mantelpiece. Like in the in the fireplace, got the shotgun. He got it off the wall, loaded it up, and he said, "Get out of my house." What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. So if you're thinking that I stayed here to avoid the crisis, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I've in fact been a one-man crisis for many years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My life has not been. What do you mean? Got a shotgun? He got the what? shotgun out. Why didn't? Why did you watch him load it? Like, what did you think? He just, he just, he just went, he just went out of the wall. And he went, and he went, get out. Oh my God. And I, I just... went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you are, you, are, insane. you are missing out on a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> For 13 pounds a month. Just how many shotgun shells that is. 13 pounds? Oh my God. Okay, so yeah, you... I wasn't in the crisis, no. Never in the crisis. But like, I assume the how's the situation in Greece now? Like what, what's what's going on? It's getting better. Because you, you go back, you visit, you must have a vibe of it. Yeah, it seems like, to me it seems like it's getting better. But yeah. the problem with people is they only notice when things get worse. Of course, because that's when the that's when the news. Is, it's, it's interesting. No, but even like the locals, if things right. get worse, they'll go every year. Like it gets worse and worse. Mm. But if it gets slightly better, so if you go from like. If you're making 50 euros a month less on yeah. minimum wage in 2011, sure. you did it in 2010, yeah. you would talk about it with everybody. Of I'm course. making 50 euros less a month. But if you make 50 euros more a month, you go, it's just fucking 50 euros. What's the right. deal? I got you. Just that's the nature of complaint. Like, yeah, it's so, a, if a slightly better is nothing, slightly worse is fucking everything. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, like, that's interesting. So um, things are getting better. Yeah. Like, I can tell. But Greek people won't tell you that. Well, this, this, this is thing I didn't know because, like, I guess, like in Australia, I just I don't really pay attention to, like EU politics. But like, there was the Greeks wanted to leave the EU. Yeah, we we did we tried Grexit. Grexit, yeah, I Grexit. The thing. I, is that where they got Brexit from? Yes, classic. The yeah, Greek, yeah, yeah, the Greeks started it. Yeah, the, the Greeks, British, the British took it. Yeah, made it their own. That's right. <laughs> It's the British Museum, all over. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly right. It's going to be in there one day. This is Grexit. <laughs> yeah. We actually took it from the Greeks. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that. It's like, it's like, it's like their version of Gaida. <laughs> <laughs> but like, they, you guys, you got, that's 2015, Grexit. That's when it was really kind of big. Yeah, yeah, 2014. That's when I went on uh, BBC One. 
Right. Oh, you, you were supposed to talk about that. Yeah. Was, more yeah. so than just like the... Yeah, it was, it was 2014, 2015. Ah, okay. Because, uh, yeah, I was looking it up because, yeah, with Grexit, there was a 61% majority. Leave, and, they, the guy, and the guy went, yeah, we're not doing that. Isn't it amazing? Yes. Like the thing that everyone is like, 51%, we can't go back on that. The Greeks like 61. And they're like, no, you guys are fucking idiots. We're staying in. Yeah, we're staying <laughs> what in. What are you, nuts? We're staying in. Man, I found that so funny. It's and just, they got reelected. Yeah. And like, I don't know, ten like sixty one is a, sixty one is considered sixty one is a, is a, is a, is a, is, a, is a proper vote. Yeah, whereas fifty one, it's like, dude, that's like fifty two. Don't fuck with the numbers, Muggles. Don't fuck with the numbers. Oh, sorry, I'm very sorry. No, uh, knowing your ability with numbers. Yeah. <laughs> will, so fifty two, yeah. I, I will 52. not argue with you. Fifty two, forty eight. Yeah, and that was and that was yeah two years ago, and then the the, the British are like that. Fuck, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's crazy. Let's do, isn't let's it? do that again. Just ma- yeah, but also, what, what's mad is how. Like uh, the political sides work here. So there's 52, 48, right? 52 yeah. leave, 48 remain. And the 48%, God, it's horrendous. I can't believe we're living on the 52% majority. Yeah. It's disgusting. It is not conclusive. It is not conclusive. It's disgusting. And now, because, because the people who voted leave are dying. Yeah. And remainers are coming of voting age. <laughs> right yeah um, the balance is shifting right and they did the YouGov like a very official poll and they found out that if the vote was today it would be 53% remain and 47% leave wow. and the remainers are going see that's proof we should stay and I'm like yeah but that is exactly the same percentage <laughs> by which you say it's inconclusive yeah, but yeah, when, it's yeah, in, yeah, yeah. when it's in your favour you go, come on, guys! It's fifty-three percent. I think we, I think, <laughs> I think the people have spoken. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you know, there's no, there's no nothing better than a bit of hypocrisy yeah. in, in people. Yeah. It's just like, what are you talking about? These numbers back me up. Of course, they're conclusive. <laughs> so I just, I just like the old British British telecom shotgun guy. He died, so that's like zero point zero one percent. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. His wife's still there. No, she's there. And like, we should have gone with talk to but her. But she's she's very malleable. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can persuade her. So um, yeah, like um, I I think it's I think it's crazy. Like, um, mm. but I, you know, I put a bet on it, right? Did, you put a bet on it. Wait, did you get to vote in the no, election? No, I tried. I, I turned up at the poll ah. and they went, are you British? I said, no. And they went, well, then you can't vote on Brexit. And I went, yeah, actually, that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think is. I think you guys might have an idea where my vote's going. <laughs> 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 Just all these like Spanish yeah, people yeah. being like, leave, we gotta leave. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But no, so yeah, because... You haven't applied for citizenship here or anything. No, I have to apply. You have to apply now. I'm, I'm going to consider applying, but it's like 17, 1800 pounds. Right. Is like, there's not a, I can't imagine. I've discussed it with many British people. I've yeah. got some British friends. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they said that, um, yeah, they were like, I'm not paying 1800 pounds to be British. Really? Like, even British people wouldn't pay 1800 pounds to be British <laughs> you know what's in it I mean you get to stay here yeah you get to stay here now it's worth it you get to go get on an island slightly more easily yeah, that's, but before I wouldn't do it because there was no point yeah whereas now now there's a lot of points but like do you feel British like that's that's the thing like do you feel like I find this question very offensive <laughs> but no I'm just I'm always... so I am British yeah <laughs> Did you not get the joke? That was a joke, Dan. You oh, missed man. it. Sorry. This is this classic British humor. I'm not aware of it. It's very dry. It is dry. Um, but no, just genuinely, because like, you've obviously lived here probably, what, half of your life? That's mm-hmm. like, according according to my math, half your life. Probably the more important bit. Yeah, the most important bit. Yeah, the bit where say. you get to kind of choose what you do. Definitely. And then, you know, so just like, do you feel like you're like, oh, I'm, you know, even obviously, you're clearly Greek, at Greek comedian. Verified, That's right. Verified Greek man. That's right. But do you I've like... got the blue tick. I mean, I don't. I absolutely don't. <laughs> if anybody out there is issuing blue ticks, please give me one. He would like that. That helps him stay in the country for one more week. <laughs> yeah. If you get a blue tick on Twitter. But like, yeah, it's like you clearly feel British and you've been here a long... You, you won't have any issues with getting citizenship. No, I'm, I might do now I'm a comedian. Really? Is that an issue? I mean... Does that affect your... If they're going to base it on declared income... <laughs> might be some problems we declare all of our income it's very declared there's yeah, no yeah. such thing as cash and comedy there's no such thing as cash in hands no such thing um but yeah that that's is that an issue like you got to earn a certain amount they had an idea that um if you want to stay in the uk you have to be earning more than thirty-three thousand pounds really a year i did not realize it was and you're like, and you're like financial mate, like 
sixty percent of all British people make less than that. Yeah, I mean that's like a London wage. Like yeah, ever, yeah. ever else is like on like yeah. low twenties. Yeah, you're going. Is no one deserving to be British? <laughs> <laughs> that's I had no idea there'd be a financial side. That's no, they, crazy they, they, discriminatory. They had a, they had a, um, uh, like a means test. Yeah, but they it, it just it, it, the idea bounced around for a bit. Yeah, I don't know if it's still about. Okay. But I think I'll be all right. Because yeah, because you've been here so long. Like, here and so it's long. been essentially unbroken, you know? Like, I, I, I figure... Because, like, yeah, 17 years is ages, but it's like, it's more... I think about the comedians who've been here for, like, you know, two, three. Like, that's not very long. Because, no. like, I, I, you know, I'm, I got my two-year visa and that expires at the end of this year. What are you going to do? I, I think I can get foreign entertainers, which is, like, it's not... It doesn't count towards citizenship. It's basically just, like... I'm a professional entertainer from a foreign, foreign country. Foreign attainers. Foreign entertainers. Foreign entertainers. So like, I How much get, you pay for that? I don't know. I, I haven't really looked into it. I'm a, I'm a, like, this, this, is the, this is the privilege coming through. It's like, if I want to stay here, I'll fucking stay here. Like, that's, you know, white Australian dude in the UK. Yeah, I'll find a way. You'd be all right. I think so. But in fairness, like, Mary, my girlfriend, she might struggle. Like, without sponsorship, I don't know what she'd do. I've heard, I've heard the story that... Um, I was doing a bit this year on stage in uh, mm. my show, which went very well, by the way. Uh, <laughs> way, way better than the Greek tragedy. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I was discussing exactly that, right? right. Getting a passport and um, how immigrants are viewed. Sure. So like, uh, I had a bit in the show uh, when I was discussing how one of the most ridiculous questions people ask me mm. is uh, British people. Mm. They say, George, uh, how are things in Greece right now? And they're going to be a bit tough. Yeah. And they say, is it because uh, of all those immigrants? And I'm like, dude, do you realize I'm an immigrant too? <laughs> right. Like, when you ask me this question. But they don't even... They yeah. don't even consider me as an immigrant. Sure. So they go... I but, mean, you do say mate a lot. Which yeah. Which I think. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> Slides you in there, you know? It's like <laughs> it does make me... He couldn't possibly be from anywhere else. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, but he says, but he said, uh, he said, like when he said that, I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, do you know how weird it sounds to be telling me, uh, is your country fucked because of all those immigrants? Well, I know what that feels like, <laughs> <laughs> like to my face, you know. But and but I don't count as one because if you're like from Greece or like um, Sweden or like Spain yeah. or France or Germany, you know, you're all right. But if you're like from um, Lebanon. Right. That's like different. You're like, or Syria. You're fucked. It's just the color of your skin. The color of your skin, right? It, it, that's what it is. It's just down to the color of your skin. But like, you, you, know, if, you, have, if, you have the wrong skin color. If I saw you walking down the street and I was, and that's, someone was like, that's a Lebanese guy, I'd be like, oh yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? No, I'm that's not, what, that's what that's, splitting hairs on that one. That's when I realized that I am white. <laughs> 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 that was, the, to me, that it was defining moments. Right. When people look at me and they go, and they go, so... Uh, is your country fucked because of the immigrants and they don't see me as one? That, that's what told me that I am white. That's what, that's it. That, that, that is a litmus <laughs> test. Uh, but, um, but I was going to say like surely But that's... someone came up to me oh, yeah. after the show and she said that she, she was um, um, like a Swedish girl. Yeah. And uh, she wanted to get, not Swedish. Where was she from? She was white. No, uh, Swedish parents, Australian. Sure. And she went to apply for a visa. Yeah. And you have to bring in to, to the UK or to Sweden? To the UK. Sure. She had to apply for a visa to the UK and she had to apply for it. She brought in like all this paperwork, mm. like like piles and piles of paperwork. Uh, she went to the office and the lady behind the counter saw the passports, saw everything. And she went, what's the piles? And she went, is there, is there paperwork? And she went, oh, you won't need that. And she said, why? And the girl went, because you're white. Fuck off! That's ha come yeah. on. That fucking happened, man. That she, is insane. No. The, the, the girl came up to me and she said, "That's what happened to me." We swear, swear down. The lady said, "You'll be alright because you're white." Jesus, I mean, so you'll be uh, alright too. I mean, yeah, I, I, but in, Sh fa in shave fairness, a, a lot, of, a lot of people do shave. Yeah, gotta shave. A little. <laughs> <laughs> man, honestly, oh, this this happened to me. I think I'm looking worse day by day. Like you know, I was on the I was on the tube the other day. A homeless guy was asking everyone for money. Didn't ask me. Hurtful. <laughs> yeah, but like maybe he. Going down. Do you think he didn't ask you because he thought you don't have any, or do you think he didn't ask you because you don't look like a charitable person? What are you talking? About? I give money. I'm do a nice guy. Are you? Yeah. Wait. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say when the Greek stuff was kind of kicking off more. 
Um, was there more Greek immigration to the UK? Just while I remember. Was there, was that like... Yeah, a, there's so many Greeks here now. Right, and that like, was post-2008. Because really Australia's obviously got a big Greek population, always yeah. has. Mm-hmm. Like, it hasn't grown, like, during that. It's just kind of been like, yeah, big Greek population. That's right. Yeah. Um, people came to Australia from Greece during the um, recession, yeah. but uh, in uh, Germany got loads. Right. And England uh, got a lot of Greeks. Yeah. Uh, I think in comparison, there were like, maybe... Something like sixty, seventy thousand a year. Right. So that's not a small number, but like mainly England and Germany. England- no, sixty, seventy a year into Britain. Right. And like hundred and sixty a year to Germany. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So why, like, why there's a massive, there's a massive, it's, there's a massive brain drain. Is it just closer, Germany, or like, or I is it know. like the thing, like the, the jobs that Greeks are good at are in Germany? No. I, I, maybe there's like these factory jobs. Well, just because I figure like, you know, you said you learned English early and if all Greek people learn English early, then Britons are good because you're not learning German, you know, like surely not. I learned German in school. Get the fuck out of here. Really? Yeah. yeah I, I Europeans, learned, man. I did, I, did, I did four years of German. That is nuts. And like I used to speak all right German. Yeah. No, not so much. But I, I reckon like I went to Hamburg for uh, like four days. Yeah. And then the third day I was like, oh, I'm Getting all right. bits no? and pieces. Yeah. So what do you speak? Greek, English and a little bit of German or is there more? Little bit of German. A little bit of German. But, um, I speak better German and I speak French. Okay, but you still uh, speak a little bit of French? Yeah, and like when I went to France, I was picking up like a few phrases here and there. But I think I have a knack for languages though. Right. I think um, like I, I went to Spain yeah. with um, well, Johnny, yeah, uh, Pelham, yeah. Uh, Bobby Mayer. Yeah, yeah. Um, bit of AK. Comedy, comedian VK in Barcelona, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. in Alicante. Alicante? Yeah, and then uh, within like a few days again, I was like, Spanish is easy. Yeah, I guess the, no, they don't have Greek roots, do they? Greeks totally. No, different. but it's just if you speak a bit of French, a bit of German, a bit of English. It all kind of bit of Greek comes like the, into yeah, the, and the, the accent is like really easy to pick up. Interesting to, to me. Yeah. Okay. No, because like, do, if you were going to get employed in Greece, would you need to speak more than one language, or is yeah, English is a requirement. Okay. Semi requirement. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, many Greeks came to Britain. Many Greeks. Um, and did, did you did you think like during that time there was kind of more like were you treated more like an immigrant then? Like when it's kind of like in the news, like we're propping up Greece, but like that kind of, you know, that kind of vibe was that, did that come to you or was it just like, no? Nah. nah, what yeah. of a Dutch buck mate? Oh, uh, that, no, but just, I'm just curious because like, you know, that thing where like it gets in the news and it's just like, oh yeah, you're right. Greeks are the problem. And then just like you're looking around trying no, to spot I know, Greek people. And I know. I know. I genuinely uh, don't have any Greek friends uh, in Britain. Wow. Like, I don't know. I barely know any Greek people. Uh, like, are there certain cities where the Greeks tend to live? Well, yeah. The, 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 no, they're very well spread out. It's just... Okay, so when Greeks go abroad, yes. um, they really bemoan uh, their luck. Okay. <laughs> so you'll find them complaining a lot. Okay. Because Greeks don't travel well. Okay. As a nation. Greeks like Greece. Yes. Greece is the best. We, lo- we love Greece. Love Greece. So when even, we come- even when it's going bad, everyone's like, Greece is yeah, still it's, fucking it's, sick. <clears throat> it's the best. So when you come out, when you, when you leave Greece, yeah. if you, uh, I found myself with some Greek people during university, which is meant to be like the happiest time, right? University. Yeah, best time. And they would just complain, oh my God. Like in New York, they go, oh, you know, the, you know, it's, it's four degrees in Newcastle. But right now, in Athens, it's 20. Oh, can you believe that? I was like, yes, I can. You're in Newcastle upon time. <laughs> what did you expect? Why are you, why are you, why are you having this conversation? Yeah. Like, how is that in any way surprising you? Yeah. Like, we are in Newcastle and they are in Athens. Like, it's, <laughs> who, who compares these two things? Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, 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 oh, yeah, but if you were, in, oh, my God, I, I miss. And they would say things like, oh, yeah, but I miss, I miss the food. Mm. In Greece, I miss the food. I said, Mate, look, I don't mean to be like someone who complains often. Or I don't mean to be someone who tells you off mm-hmm. but or a know-it-all. But I think I have the answer if you miss the food. Uh, cook. <laughs> <laughs> you can cook it exactly yeah. to your specifications. <laughs> and it will, really, it will really remind you of Greece. It's actually going to be authentic Greek food yeah, 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 because you, you are Greek yeah, you and can, cooking you can, it. Cooking it, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. Trust me. Go to the shop, yeah. buy the ingredients you want, combine <laughs> them in a desirable manner, 
and Greek food will come out. Right? <laughs> Why are you complaining? The problem is that when you're in Greece, your mom look fucking cooked for you every day and you're a useless piece of shit. <laughs> That's what the problem is. And then all they would go, oh, you know, um, the nightclubs here. When I first arrived, they used to close at 2 a.m. Yeah, right. Pretty much like uh, Sydney. Sydney. Yeah, very similar. <clears throat> 2 a.m. But in Greece, if you go clubbing, you will leave the house at 12.30 or 1 a.m. Yeah. That's kind of common European. Yeah. You know, you leave the house at, later. You leave the house at 1 a.m., come home at 6. Yeah. So Greeks would go, oh, like the club closes at 2. At 2? Can you believe it closes at 2? Like, how the fuck am I going to have fun in a club when it closes at 2? I'm like, well, go out at 10. <laughs> just arrive earlier. Just go earlier. Yeah. Go home earlier. Yeah. And that's it. Just uh, like adjust. And it was such a constant stream of like inability to adapt. Right. That to me, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't be around people who just every every time they spoke, they were, uh, you know, Chris would be great now. Yeah, I know Chris is great now, but yeah. you're in England. Get on with it. Or go the fuck back where you came from. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. But uh, I um, would just, I can say that. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, because I'm a uh, racist. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there uh, we go. Now we're zinging. Finally, in this hey. episode, George is, George is popping. George has got some gags coming. <laughs> But no, like, I, I well, mean, have you been, has this been dry of jokes? No, no, no. But it's like, hey, like zigging and zagging. Zing. Just like, cause I'm a, hey, pullback reveal. Whoa, there <laughs> yeah. it is. No, just, it's funny. Yeah. Cause moving here, like, you know, I obviously complain about parts of the UK cause it's fun. And like, you, I think you tend to complain to people from your country cause you're just like, oh, of course they agree. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Of course everyone in this country agrees on the same stuff. And then you're like, look at a poll like Brexit. And like, turns out they don't agree. <laughs> turns out countries don't agree at all. Yeah, yeah. It's actually it's a, crazy. It's a big divide. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not all the same person. So it was very weird to me. So I couldn't hang out with Greeks. Yeah. So I only was hanging out with English people. Yeah. Like um, Tom and then uh, other people, like um, the gay girls. <laughs> <laughs> and, Beautiful callback yeah, to a yeah. thing I'm not sure whether or not I'll cut out of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and then, um, um, like, I've got like uh, quite a lot of friends, but like, and the Greek people I would like to meet, yeah, I can never meet because they're also hanging out with English people. Of course, that's that's a good point. That's that's tricky. Yeah, you're looking for the Greek people who like England and like English people, and they're not, not looking to be for seen. you. You're just like, they're not going to be seen. We're yeah. just living separate lives. <laughs> he ships in the night. Just, yeah, <laughs> just not making it. Every, every now and then, I go to a party. Yeah, uh, and they would be like, I would be like, out with my friends, and they would be out with like their friends. I go, you're Greek, yeah. Where are you from? And they go, well. You're the kind of person that would like to make a friend. <laughs> but if I do, it will really cancel our lives. <laughs> yeah. We're going we're gonna to be two great guys in a group. Impossible. Which reminds me of that story I was telling you in Sydney. Yeah. When I was like with the really Greek dudes. Yeah. Uh, because I was talking to them. and I, I didn't tell them I was Greek. Sure. Because I was trying to avoid. Could they tell? No, because I was speaking. like Because they, haven't, they hadn't seen one like me that's lived in England for so long. Right. So... And I was out with Kyle Legacy. If you don't know Kyle Legacy. He's been on the pod. Yeah, has he? He's been on. Okay. So I was on, I was on Kyle uh, at this party. He's a, he's a white English man with a red afro. Continue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't and, look Greek. <laughs> and, Kyle, and Kyle was like, so where are you guys from? They're like, oh, we, uh, they're Australians, right? But yeah. they say we're Greek. Yeah. And they were Greeks. Um, they were Australian, but they were Greek. And uh, Kyle was like, ah, he's like you. I'm like... Uh, and I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Greek. And Kyle was like, "Ah, what the fuck you on about, bro? <laughs> You're Greek." Just selling you out immediately. Yeah. Yeah. The Greek. I was like, and the guy was like, "He's not Greek." The, the guy was like, "I can tell Greek people. This guy is not Greek. His accent is in Greek." And uh, I was just really enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, "You're right. Uh, what, 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 you know, you're, you're Greeks, yeah." And yeah. they're like, "Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I live in England. I'm not Greek." Uh, what, what? And Kyle was like, the Kyle was looking at me going. What the fuck are you doing, George? Tell them you're Greek. Tell them you're Greek. <laughs> Tell them you're Greek. Like, Kyle couldn't compute what I was doing. Yeah. His tiny little fucking mind. Of course not. Couldn't put things together, what I was doing. So he's like, Tell them. Tell them. And he's like, uh, he, Kyle said, um, Oh, yeah. Like, you'd be surprised, though, when you find out his name is George Akaropoulos. And the guy started laughing really hard. Yeah. Like, really hard. Why? And I was like, Why are you laughing so hard? Turns out his name. George Akaropoulos. <laughs> <laughs> that is absurd. Isn't it? That is, what? 
He wasn't fucking with you? He wasn't fucking with me. Oh my God. George, you, you met George Zakharopoulos. I met George Zakharopoulos in Sydney. He might have been that guy on Twitter. He was not a, he was no comedian. <laughs> no comedian. Oh man. Two more things with the, with the Brexit. I just think you, I think you'll get citizenship and be able to stay here, right? Surely like, it'd be weird yeah. if you didn't. If I, if I didn't, I'm fucked. Yeah. Where just career wise, go? like that's just kind of, could you go to Australia? Is that a possibility? I'd love to go. I, I I I would like to go to Australia, but I think maybe what I'm going to end up doing is like go to Ireland. <laughs> really? Is that? Oh, because that's still a year, of course. Yeah. Um, and you can just and fly out, fly and fly out. But like, if you work here, but Ryanair is like twenty pound return. Oh yeah, like I I know that, but it's more just like, could you then continue to work here like officially, or would it all have to be like kind of cash stuff? I don't know. Like, guys, because I just don't know the working rights for. Because, you know, my experience has just been completely different. It's like I have this very limited visa and then I can kind of apply through this other thing. But like, whereas you can just live here and work yeah. here as an EU citizen. Yeah. Is there a chance that you have to go back to Australia? Um, I mean, yeah, like I'll have to at the end of this visa and then I can reapply and I can, you know, do certain things. So you're going back in December? Yeah, man, December. Um, but like, do you, if you lived in Ireland, you could obviously work in Ireland. But like in, you said the Greek comedy scene has kind of exploded. Yeah, it's taking off. But could you, have you, do you ever perform in Greece? I do. In Greece? It's really and in, hard. And in Greek? It's really hard. It takes me like uh, four or five gigs. To get? To get uh, the ball rolling because you have to get the, the rhythm right. Yeah. So unless you've written a joke in Greek. Yeah. Which will be new material. Yeah, yeah. And you have to like polish it. Yeah. And then you have to translate the joke from English. To Greek. To Greek. Because you're using like different words, you have to find the correct rhythm mm -hmm. for the joke. Yeah, because uh, you got to get the beats right. Cause yeah, because like you know, even though the idea is funny, like obviously, the yeah, way and you, that it's and you have to change, you have to change. Um, so, and maybe the punchline in Greek, in English, would be, and the door remains shut. Yeah, but in Greek, for you to make it funny, it might be, and they never open the door. Right, so it's just that little like, and you'd have to obviously and you have kind to, like, of perform it before you know to get a feel for it. Yeah, yeah. So okay. because because you you're describing the same uh, situation. Yeah, but just but the, the way the language is structured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, but like, it, would it even be possible to make like a living? Like, because obviously you're it professional is. People, people in the do UK. It. But in in Greek, could like you could you like if you kind of started and stuff and you just performed in Greek? I think I would have a very good PR campaign. Yeah. Right. Because I've lived in England for so long. So, like, is that something that you've been trying to do more as the scene grows? Just go in there and perform. Yeah, it's, and it's hard though. Get because, Greek fans. Yeah, it's uh, a few I, more George Zakharopoulos. I would love to. Yeah, uh, but now because I go to Australia for three months a year. Yeah. Then I go to Edinburgh for a month a year. Yeah. Then I do the clubs here. It's very like when am I going to leave to go to Greece? Well, that it's just like <clears> I'm it's just, very hard because I, I just know like the European stuff, like especially in its own languages, is exploding. It is exploding everywhere. Everywhere, like Estonia, Poland, like uh, lots of the Eastern European stuff, like Croatia. I don't think Croatia's got anything. Yeah, but like, I assume Greek would obviously be there because like there are Greek shows in London. There are Greek, you know, Greek speaking nights. I'm taking well. There's um, there's a, a Greek show happening every um few months. But yeah. They, they fly comedians from Greece for it. Well, this is, yeah, this is the thing, because I know the guy who runs it, Pete Jonas, is Australian and Greek. And he's the guy who runs it here. And that's... But you, have you done one of those? Like, hmm? Have you done a Greek show in London yet? Well, this is the, um, this is the question. I was having a conversation with Pete today. Yeah, right. Because it's a very, very big Greek YouTuber uh -huh. who's coming to live in London. Coming to live in London. Yeah. Oh. But the guy is like massive in Greece. Yeah. He, like for a country of 10 million people. Yeah. He gets easily four or 500,000 views wow. on his YouTube uploads. Yeah, right. So just like, he's, he's the guy. He's, he's the guy. Greek's biggest star. And this is a conversation we had today on the way here when you he said, this guy is coming. Um, he, was, he wants a residency at a regular night. Um also, there's a, another Greek open mic night, so I'm thinking maybe we can organize a Sunday gig of two to three acts. Mm -hmm. We'll be speaking Greek, blah, blah. And I said, by the way, I do wonder when you're going to ask me to do a Greek speaking solo show instead of flying comedians out. Right. And he said, when you can sell 300 tickets. <laughs> but but do, they, do they go because they know the name or do they go because it's a Greek speaking show? It's a Greek speaking show. It's a Greek speaking show. But like, are these guys famous in Greece? The, the, I think it's really caught up. I think, uh, I don't, 
and you might relate to that. Right. Um, in Greece. Yeah. I don't get the respect I think I deserve. Oh, but it's just like, but are these guys, like they're obviously just working in Greece all the time and I assume there's not many. Like, is it a small scene? Is it like, you know? There's, under- about, there's about 30 full-time comedians in Greece right now. Yeah. So like it's, it's small and you're not putting the yards in. So why would they be yeah. like, oh, let's welcome him back in? But they've, they've, they've seen, like I've, I've done gigs in Greece. Yeah. And a lot of them come to Edinburgh yeah. and watch a few shows every year. Oh, okay. And they come to my shows, like they've come to like Top Secret. Yeah. They've seen me like destroy. Yeah. Um, so they know I'm good. Yeah, yeah. But like you're not in their scene. I'm, 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 I'm not in their but scene. But that's why I'm like, so are you not making an effort to go and perform in Greece? Because if you can make money, like, you know, and, yeah. and you can, you know, there's, you're never going to not be able to work in Greece, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a possibility. Well, the army, the army will have to. Uh... The army would still want you. Yeah. What? Yeah. But you're old now. Like, come on, like, mate. Come on. <laughs> Let's not drive the nail in. <laughs> like, why would, surely like, ten, like 17 years after the fact, the army is kind of like, all right, fair. I need to get some paperwork sorted here. And then I can go back to Greece for like up to six months a year. Okay. Which is a fair amount. Yeah, yeah. But like as in that's, that's so you can keep coming into the UK or that's so you can avoid the army. So I can avoid the army in Greece. Wow. Yeah. But what, what, do you, what do you say? Just like... I'm too like old. I'm, I'm, no, I've been living in the UK. If you, can, if you if you prove you've been living abroad continuously for eleven years, yeah, you get a very the, the desired paperwork. Interesting. Eleven years. Eleven years. Not even ten. Just that one extra. Yeah, but um, like if, a few years I tried uh, when when I clocked eleven years, I tried to do it. Yeah, I couldn't prove continuous presence because sure. I had lost my bank statements from back then. Okay. So I couldn't prove continuous presence when I couldn't prove that. They said wait. Yeah. And now every time I try to book an appointment. Uh, there's so many cutbacks. There's not available slots. Right. So, so yeah, 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 it's impossible. Okay. So that's it. And then you still have to do that. But then after that, you can... Go out to Greece for six months a year. Yeah, right. But not the entire time. But would that affect you here? Like, would that affect your attempt to get like residency? Because you're applying for citizenship or residency? Uh, settled status. Is settled gonna... status. Okay. But it's going to be. Ha- it's going to happen after Brexit kicks off. You can apply for it. Okay. I think it's like 50 pounds. Okay, so what, like, kind of, they've got a thing in place mm-hmm. already. That's part of yeah. it. Yeah. So, like, is that, did you have to, did you just look this stuff up yourself or did you, that you have, like, a lawyer or People something? People tend to, like, send me links <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook. They like, go, oh, like, George, have you seen this? I'm like, fuck, I haven't seen this. Thanks, guys. Are these, like, English comedians yeah, yeah, just yeah, looking yeah. out for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the benefit of the comedy yeah, community. Yeah. Everyone's just reading The Guardian anyway, being like, George, you probably want this. Yeah, like, oh, thanks, yeah. guys. I appreciate you trying to keep me here. Like, yeah, did did the vote like did it just like affect your opinion of like English people like the Brexit thing? Like I'd assu- I'd assume not, but I was very hurt. Really? When the results came out, I felt very, very, very hurt. Really? Very so like on a personal level. Yeah, I felt like, like alienated. Weird. Yeah, I was like, also oh, you don't want me here. Yeah. How, what what did Newcastle vote? Your hometown, out of interest. Fifty one percent remain. So it was a remain. Yeah, fifty-one percent. I mean, that's conclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, Sunderland, for example, yeah, was the first one that voted that got the results declared. Yeah, and it was like sixty-six percent leave. Right, Sunderland. But that that was kind of indicative of how, like, the smaller the town, the more likely. Yeah, but it's funny because they had the Nissan factory there, and the Nissan factory was like, if you vote leave, we might pack up and go, and now they're packing up and leaving. And they're going, what are we going to do? Oh, I don't care, mate. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. You, you made a horrible decision. So I, feel very, I feel very bad because part of me wants to think that they were like misled. Yeah. And now they're going to have a worse life because they were misled. Part of me is thinking, oh, yeah. shouldn't you have read that? Yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's, it does seem like people are misled, but like every election involves a fair bit of misinformation. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like a pretty cynical view, I guess. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you were hurt. Like, do, do, I was here. Were you, you were surprised, I assume, as well? No. You weren't surprised? No. Oh, you thought it was... I voted. I, I, I put a bet on leave. Put a bet on leave? How much did you bet? I bet uh, 200 pounds and I made 900. Wow. Because I read somewhere, I said, uh, a study, yeah. that said people uh, in... There was... I, I, I watched the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, about the the crisis happening. Yeah, uh, there were some some brothers who made a ton of money, uh, sorting shares, like betting against the market. Yeah, 
and they said the odds when you like the the returns were very high mm-hmm. because if they bet against the market they were banking on a crisis yeah and people instinctively will put a lot higher odds on a bad thing happening because they don't want this to be likely because they don't want something to be likely even bookmakers right will make it will give it higher odds as an instinctive reaction so like the, so the leave vote the emotional thing it affects the maths yeah even though like it shouldn't but yeah. It, yeah so i gotcha. thought i thought if you're going to put a going to put a bet mm. always put a bet on the thing you don't want to happen yeah because because the world would probably also not want it to happen yeah which means we'll have higher odds sure and then so, you make a little return yeah, even though so, something bad happens so the way i saw it is if i lose the money mm-hmm. great because it's a remain vote. Yeah. If the country leaves, I should make a little bit of dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and did which, the same. I did the same with Trump. Yeah, which will, which will cover your application for the citizenship. Yeah, I did the same with Trump. Really? Yeah, and in 2020, I'm going to do the same for Trump as well. I'm going to vote for Trump to uh, get reelected. So you were you were the sympathetic. I'm not vote, but like bet on it. You were the sympathetic figure here when you're like, yeah, I felt hurt by the vote, and everyone's like, man, this guy's making money. This guy's yeah, making I, money. Off I don't Brexit. understand. I don't understand why. Um, why making money should give you no sympathy? I mean, it's just... Like, if I bet money on getting bitten up on the way home, and then I get bitten up on the way home, would you go, yeah, yeah but at least you made some money? Yeah, because you probably started the fight to get the money. <laughs> yeah, that is right. <laughs> Horrible example. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you were so yeah. good with the maths for yeah. one second. You were like, yeah, I did this thing, I read, and now I learned, and I got money, and then it's just like, wait, no, he's an idiot again. Um, all right, I think we should, I think we should call it. Um, I guess, the, I guess the one thing is like, do, do you think, like you've lived here for significantly longer than I have. Do, do you think there's just going to be a no deal thing? Like what's your, what's, your, what's your bet? What's your bet on this one? No deal? Are they definitely leaving? So, see, that's, uh, that's the thing. Many people are going, oh, it's going to get cancelled. Brexit will get cancelled. Yeah. I think that's just wishful thinking. Yeah. You think it's on? Yeah, I think it's happening. I, I'm really surprised by the amount of comedians I voted leave. Really? Yeah. Is that a high number? I would have assumed very low. Yeah, because it, it exactly, surely affects and, and, the, and the people too. And I find that, uh, the, that people, the people who vote leave from the comedians uh, are the rich ones. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because I know there are like economic arguments for it, which I don't really understand nor try to understand. Yeah. But I know like if either, like, a either, lot of either rich, are like there's yeah. there are reasons to do this. Either, if, 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 either rich comedians, yeah, racist comedians, <laughs> or the true left. The true left, they wanted to live. Yeah, because um, the European Union is fundamentally a capitalist structure. Right. So if you're like, if you're like true left, you wouldn't want to be part of a free market, because um, the true left don't want a completely free, free market because it is about. Uh, sharing the goods. The free market is against what uh, the true left want because it pushes the wages down. Yeah, because it's... So, then, uh, yeah. okay. it's, on, it's, on, it's on the socialist structure. So if you're true left wing, uh, you should want a leave vote. Mm. But now the true left has been conflated with anti-racist sentiment. Yeah. And therefore, like you, if you're true left now, you want to stay. Yeah, which I completely get. I completely get. Like if you're true... Like many left wing people want to stay in the EU mm. but economically speaking being left wing should mean you want to live yeah and by the way you should take absolutely no heed of what I just said that's okay because I could be I could be talking complete shit but it's my understanding this is happening that's why Corbyn will never admit like he doesn't like, he doesn't want to be in the European Union but he can't say it because if he says it Labour will go down yeah, because but he's, the he, he's a man of principle, mm. so he can't he, can, he can't say he wants to stay either because it will go against what he believes. Right. Because he, because he's a man of principle, he's dying, like he's going to fall on his sword. Yeah, he's kind of gone. Is damned it, if he does, damned if he doesn't. Yeah, and like Theresa May is then the opposite. She never wanted to leave. Yeah. She was like a pro Remain. She was she was she was on the Remain campaign. But the she entire just time. didn't campaign during that because that's what I was reading today. That like she didn't campaign during it. So then when, you know, David Cameron went down, she was like, yeah, I mean, I guess I can, yeah. I guess I can take this thing over. I can go like, completely ag- I, against what I believe completely. Yeah. And she was like, the country will be fucked if we leave. Yeah. And now she's like, 
Well, I get to be prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> I will be prime minister of the country that is fucked when we yeah. live. It's like people like is the same thing. People give up on the values. Like this. Yeah. Like uh, for example, and people get surprised by that. It's like um, uh, the craft beer people. Yeah. Okay. Craft beer. They will always go. Oh yeah, we'll be a small time company. Small time company. They get loads of like orders. They go fuck. We got to expand. Make some money. Yeah. Yeah. And before you know, they've no longer an independent producer because uh, they found out how much they can make. Like Brew Dog. You know Brew Dog? Yeah, I love Brew Dog. Brew Dog Punk Dog, IPA. Brew Dog, Brew Dog, what a go, beverage. Brew Dog goes about. England's only good beer. Brew Dog IPA. Yeah, Brew, Brew Dog goes about. Punk. Uh, pretending it's punk beer. Yeah. But it's been bought by fucking Coca Cola. Yeah, of course. Or Heineken or someone. But that's money, dude. Yeah, because they, exactly. They were like, we're independent. Independent. And they went, well, how much? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll sell. I mean, you smashed a plate for 200 pounds. You have yeah, to yeah, tell yeah, me. Yeah, 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 selling, selling out's dope. Yeah, I, I completely understand it. If someone told me to punch a kangaroo for 500 quid, I'd do it. Would you not punch a kangaroo for like free anyway? Nah, because they're feisty. They'd win. They'd so, win the fight. So what's your principle? You love kangaroos or you don't want to, to fight someone I don't want to hurt animals. But I also don't want to not have 500 quid. <laughs> no. All right. George Zach. George Zacharopoulos. How do you want to... What's your podcast name? A podcast name? Yeah. George Zach or George Zacharopoulos? Uh, let's do Zacharopoulos. Let's do Zacharopoulos. Yeah. Where, but, can, where uh, can people find you? Remember, Australians do listen. You're at Melbourne? Adelaide? Yeah, I'm doing Adelaide. Um, I'm flying on Thursday, which is in three days from now. Yeah. So on the 21st of February, I'm going to Adelaide. Nice. I'll be there uh, until the 17th of March, which is my comedy anniversary. Comedy anniversary. Yeah. How many years in the game? I, I haven't. I, it's either nine or ten. I have to look it up. <laughs> but it, right. it might be ten. But there's a very good chance because the, the show is selling so well. I might put an extra show. Oof. If I put an extra show on my comedy anniversary, I might, I, I might just like... I might come a little in my pants. A little bit. Yeah. Think of about course. moving to Australia. And then uh, I'm, uh, my show is called the uh, Greek Comedian of the Year. Greek Comedian of the Year. Yeah. An official which, award. Which is a competition I made up, <laughs> and then crowned myself the winner. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, somebody tells me uh, I will be the reigning champ <laughs> for years to come. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Greek Geordie, formerly known as the Greek Geordie, now the Greek Comedian, George Zakharopoulos, officially Greek Comedian of the Year. 2020, 2021, and 2022. Uh, you can bet on those now, people. Uh, good odds in tragedy. That's what we've learned. All right, cheers, mate. All right, that was my chat with George. I know it was a bit of a long one, but hey, that is a direction I have decided to take this podcast in. Everybody sits around the hour mark. I say no. I reckon 90 minutes is the goddamn sweet spot. I think that's what you guys want. If you disagree, please get in touch with me. I love hearing from you. I now have a Twitter account for The Union Jackoff. It is at The Union Jackoff on Twitter. We've got some followers there. And, of course, you can get at me on Twitter, at Dan Muggleton. And do get in touch with George, at Greek Comedian. We did mention his Twitter handle enough times for, I think, you guys to get a little bit excited about it. Uh, thank you for tuning in this week. I have some other guests from Europe coming up. We're talking the Netherlands. We're talking Italy. I'm going to see if I can find some German comedians. Huh? Get it? Because German people aren't funny. Well, you're bloody wrong. There's at least two of them in the UK and they are doing very, very well. I'm going to try and get them on here. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed chatting to George. I had no idea he had been in the UK for as long as he had. I had no idea kind of just how strange it was that he found himself in the UK and that he never left. And yeah, I got to say, like it does, it does bum me out that he was hurt by the vote because like, I don't know, personally, I don't think I've ever been hurt by a vote. Like we had the vote in Australia recently on same-sex marriage and that got up. Like the, the campaigning was a bit gross, but, you know, we did vote to allow same-sex marriage and you can't argue with the result. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a shame that someone who's lived in a place for 17 years can be hurt by their population generally when personally, I you know, I don't really know anyone 
who voted leave. But hey, maybe that's just because I hang out with Australians and none of them got to vote. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Uh, you jerk offs, it is a pleasure chatting with you every single week. Get in touch if you ever want to. Give us a rating on iTunes. Tell a friend. Or my big campaign to just tell someone. If you like the podcast, you tell somebody else and they tell somebody else. And then, you know, we're as big as Joe Rogan. That's how this shit works. Anyway, Daniel Muggleton, see you later. Have a good one. Cheers, bye. <laughs>